And that easy route involves sacrificing the player's quality of life. Right? So we keep players hooked by giving these rewards, and as long as they're hooked, it doesn't necessarily matter what the quality of the core gameplay is. Right? The gameplay can be not very good, but as long as they want to collect all, all the little uh, achievements right, or um, you know, get the nicer sword and, and the nicer armor, um, then they'll still play the game. Right? And as long as people play, it's all the same to us designers. We're like, oh, it's a pretty good game. You know, a lot of people want to play it. They say they like it. Um, and so I'm sure that at this point, a lot of people think that I'm kind of meanlessly, uh, needlessly babbling on about this point. But maybe to clarify it, uh, I want to put forth this question at the bottom of this slide, which is, you know, think of any game that has a lot of rewards in it like this, and ask yourself, if you took out all of the scheduled rewards, the the power-ups, you know, that didn't directly affect gameplay, you know, the the um, ever escalating weapons and armor. If you took out um, the story, right, unless the story is necessary to play the game, um, would players still want to play your game, right? Would they still want to uh, do that same fundamental activity without all the whiz bang particle systems and and anything like that? Um, and I'm not saying that 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 wouldn't damage a game. That would damage almost any game that we're talking about, right? Any game is going to be less compelling if you take out those extra rewards. But what I'm saying is, if you take all that stuff off, if you strip it and just have the gameplay, does your game fall below a certain threshold or not? Does it fall below a line where nobody wants to pay attention to it anymore? Or is it still something that a lot of people would want to play, right? And um, that's what I'm getting at here, is I think we need, we need to build that kind of discernment about the quality of gameplay. So I've been saying this kind of thing in public for a few months now, and a lot of people say, well, what? It doesn't, you're saying rewards are bad. That doesn't make sense. You, you know? But I'm not saying that rewards are bad. I'm saying that they can be divided into two categories. right? Some rewards are like food in that they're naturally beneficial to you when you consume them, right? Um, and, and they help increase your quality of life. And some rewards are like drugs where you know, maybe they're fun and they taste good, but they don't really give you any nutrition, and if you do too many of them, you know, that's actually detrimental to your health, right? As game designers, we don't understand food. We don't know how to make food very often. So we resort to drugs all the time, right? And that shows, that shows in the discontent of many people uh, with um, the state of games that they have in front of them. For example, Daniel Radish, who gave uh, that nice quote at the beginning of this talk, um, he was hungry, he wanted some food, but Halo 3 was just giving him cheap drugs, and he didn't want that, right? So the game industry is chasing bigger and bigger player bases every year, um, and I claim that the industry exploits them in an unethical way, and we as designers usually don't see it as unethical, but I think that that's only because we refuse to stop and think about the ramification and the magnitude of what we're doing. Um, and magnitude is the key. So here I've got three pictures of things that are not necessarily bad. They're not bad if you do them as an individual a little bit at the time. Like you could smoke once in a while, sure. You can have some fast food. You can play World of Warcraft, right? But when you talk about... I know I'm serious. I'm totally serious when I put World of Warcraft in that line. When you talk about um, these things at a societal level, right? It becomes um, a societal problem, right? People die from smoking all the time, even though you could probably smoke some cigarettes individually and it's no big deal. Um, people's quality of life is tremendously uh, lowered and, and their health is damaged by fast food, right? And I'll talk about World of Warcraft in upcoming slides. Um, the, and the thing I want to get at is I'm not trying to blame players here or anything. I'm not trying to say you should feel bad if you eat McDonald's or anything. But what I am saying is, if you're the CEO of McDonald's, right, or you're an exec in an ad agency whose job is to put a McDonald's hamburger in the hand of every child in America, you should not feel good about your job, right? You should feel ashamed. And we don't... Yeah, you should. And, and we don't have that in the games business. We don't have that sense. Because we feel like games are just entertainment, we don't really have the sense that, that we could do things that we might be ashamed of yet, right? If we're, if we're powerful people, if our medium is powerful, we should have the capability to do things that we should be ashamed of and then make the choice about whether we're going to do them or not. So uh, what does World of Warcraft say? Um, 
I just picked a few things of the many things that I think it says. Uh, but, but like I said, so like I said earlier, uh, the rules of a game, right? The kinds of interactions that a game puts you into, is the meaning of life for that game, right? And the meaning of life in World of Warcraft is kind of like, well, you're some schmo who doesn't really have anything better to do than sit around pushing a button, right, and killing imaginary monsters that are meaningless, right? It also says it doesn't really matter if you're smart or um, are adept at trying to get ahead in a system because what really matters is how much time you sink in because there's all these artificial constraints on you. Um, that also says that you don't really need to do anything exceptional because to feel good, to be rewarded, all you need to do is run the treadmill like everyone else. Now, I'm not saying that World of Warcraft teaches you those things explicitly and logically, right? You don't come away after playing World of Warcraft with those ideas in your head. But what I am saying is that those things take root subtly and subconsciously, right? Um, it's like advertising impressions and brand identity, right? Lots of people say, oh, advertising, it doesn't work on me, you know? I see ads on TV and it doesn't affect my purchasing decisions. Well, those people are wrong. It does. That's why advertising is such a huge business, right? Because people have been doing it forever and they know that it works, right? Our minds are impressed upon by these things that we see all the time and even more so by these things that we do because in games we're active participants, all right? People identify with their activities. If, if you work at a really horrible, boring job and you're just there for the money and you do that for years and years, that becomes part of your identity, right? Um, it becomes difficult to separate you from all this time you spent at your job. Um, same thing with games that you play. Um, people are products of their origins and of their environments, right? And we're giving people these environments that they're ostensibly having fun in these games. We're helping determine what they're going to be. So um, to finish up uh, this idea about natural rewards versus artificial rewards, I thought I would give a positive example of what I think is a very natural reward. This one came from a posting on Clint Hawking's blog, um, and it's about the game Portal, which I'm sure many of you have played and enjoyed. It's a great game. Um, Manvir Hare wrote, uh, The brilliance in Portal lies not only in its simplicity and excellent humor, but also in the moments of realization when you figure out a puzzle. No puzzle stumped me for more than five minutes in that game, yet I went from being completely dumbfounded one moment to feeling like a genius the next as I realized what I was supposed to do. Right? He got his own brain rewarded him for solving puzzles in Portal. I would claim that that means that the activities he, were perform he was performing were somehow intrinsically worthwhile for him. He got a reward out of it without, you know, the game didn't need to jump up and down and sing Ode to Joy and like launch fireworks every time he launched a puzzle or solved a puzzle, right? It didn't need to say, you're a genius for getting to the exit. Um, no, it, all the game had to do was set up situations uh, to challenge him at his pace, right? And for him to succeed genuinely. Um, I think that's important and I think that that's something that we could uh, really learn from. Okay, so um, I'm not sure that I want to keep harping on this, uh, but I will, um, because because I come, you know, I say this kind of thing about game design being a serious problem, and like everybody's like, whatever, dude, like you're smoking something. Um, so I want to frame this again. It's a matter of scale. Um, games are going to be huge, right? We're selling a lot of them. And um, what I see is the primary challenge for mankind in this century, and this could change because we're still early in the century, right? Um, but the challenge is to understand and deal with the fact that despite we have all these enterprises that create good things for us that I've listed on the right, you know, like human rights and safety and leisure time and fast transportation, um, those are pretty good things, but we do these at such a scale that we cannot help but that they affect the world, right? So on the left, there are some things, some of them at least are unintentional side effects of these good things that we've created, right? We've come to understand this. We, we haven't really effectively dealt with it yet. And in this next century, like as societies, we need to like understand that long-term sustainable existence is a lot harder than just doing the basic thing, right? So having fast transportation in a healthy world that exists and lasts for a long time is a lot harder than just having fast transportation, right? Um, we engage in these enterprises at such a magnitude